Hey folks, welcome back to another HP Gaming Game Link video. We are here in our gaming studio of sorts. It is still a work in progress, but it's very, very exciting. It's that time of the month again. It's time to delve into all things crowdfunding as we take you through our July 2021 Gotcha Backer. Hey folks, thank you once again for joining me. For those of you who don't know me, and you should by now, my name is Matt, and we are here once again for our July 2021 Gotcha Backer, episode two, season two. There is a lot to get through uh, today. Uh, we are very excited to say there's a few new arrivals, some that have arrived and some that are on the horizon, which may be arriving as early as tomorrow, which is super exciting. First up, uh, we have uh, Micro Dojo, which is inside this little envelope. That's it. That's all that came in there. Inside this envelope are three copies of the game, which means we'll have some that will be available on our store, hopefully by the time this goes live, and maybe even one as a giveaway as well. We'll see what happens, but there's three copies of the game in that very thin envelope, which is very exciting. Looking forward to taking that for a spin. Uh, also very exciting on the horizon and on deck for potential arrival as early as tomorrow is uh, Kabuto Sumo, which is the sort of... Um, uh, pushing and shoving sumo game with bugs and little tools and tricks as well. Tabletop game looks fantastic. And the ever impressive Twisted Fables uh, 1v1 or 2v2 deck builder with um, Femme Fatales from the fantasy, uh, fantasy realm, uh, Snow White, Seven Dwarfs, that sort of stuff. But very much flipped on their heads, which is absolutely fantastic. Really looking forward to getting my hands on those. Uh, but as always, we're going to take you through the three different aspects of now, then and beyond. Uh, sorry, then, now and beyond, I should say. So let's take a look at the project updates that we've got for July 2021 of stuff we backed back then. <laughs> Okay, so the first project that I would like to update you all on are things that have been moving forward is Castles of Mad King Ludwig, the Collector's Edition. Uh, there has been a lot of talk about this one on socials and also on Kickstarter as well. Uh, the app for this game has just received some massive updates, so check that one out as well if you can't find anyone to play physical copies with because there's always people online. Uh, great community support for that one. Uh, Castles of Mad King Ludwig, if you're just joining us since your first foray into Got Your Backer, is a tile placement game, um, sort of a sort of a sim city of sorts, if that makes sense. You build the castle, you score points, and ultimately whoever has the most points and design points at the end of the game wins. Um, biggest news for this one is that not so much delays on production, it's been more about uh, the elements that uh, go into production, in this case, particularly game trays. Uh, game trays have come on board to help with all the components because if you ha have, a, have been a fan of the show, you'll know that there's the colossal tier for this particular game uh, rather than just a standard super deluxe collector's edition. There's the colossal, which basically upscales everything by about 400%. Um, and the, the colossal boxes, uh, along with the deluxe, super deluxe game trays, have been brought on board to help allocate components and ideally organize everything into uh, individual player trays. So literally, take the lid off the box, grab your player trays, and all your components are there ready to go. So you can literally be up and playing within about two minutes, which is really fantastic. Uh, but there's been talk about the different colors uh, and the different molds of these inserts as well. Uh, I think the colossal one, I think, is like a nice burgundy colour. Uh, and the uh, Super Deluxe Collector's Edition, I think, is a green. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, the, the game trays and, and the discussion about that, along with the app development, to coincide with the release of the Collector's Edition. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, looking forward to getting that one to us. Still slated to make their target deadline, for hopefully before the end of the year. Uh, fingers crossed that things start to open up a little bit around the world. Who knows? That's Castles of Mad King Ludwig. 
Okay, from Castles and Mad Kings to Madcap Races and Chases, this is a game that I backed purely because of the maniacal fun of racing around a track causing damage. I'm talking about, of course, Race Cart Riot. Now, this one is pretty much slated to start shipping in the not too distant future. It is a madcap race around the track uh, where you basically, it's, it's, a, it's effectively Mario Kart on a board. Um, the stretch goals for this one allowed for uh, additional sides. There's a Rainbow Road-esque style track on the reverse of the board. There's four different characters to choose from. You can build your own, construct your own carts to race around the tracks as well, which will give you bonuses and may or may not hinder your opponents as well. Uh, race Cart Riot looks absolutely fantastic. The miniature stops for this one look really good as well. Uh, and at this stage, as I said, hopefully we'll start shipping in the not too distant future. So we'll be able to have that unboxed for you before the end of the year. Uh, very excited to share Race Cart Riot with you when it arrives on our shores. Another game that has had its first wave start shipping, uh, which is all the add-ons and peripherals, but not actually the game itself, which is on target uh, to uh, make their September delivery or start shipping in September, is a game that is a, uh, a next echelon of uh, the original game. And it's a game that obviously, being a deck builder, I was all in for, but having played the original game and some of the expansions, I'm really excited to see how this plays out because it is the same deck building experience with a whole nother level of crazy. And I'm talking about Ascension Tactics. Now this is the Ascension deck builder with a board that you move around the board, move minis around the board, cause trouble. There's area control, uh, capture the flag elements as well. Uh, and the fact that you can combo your cards to then do damage to the other player's minis as well as the other player themselves. Um, very different style of game as opposed to just competing for honor points. Uh, I do like the feel of a deck builder that adds not so much worker placement but also just something another element that brings a bit more strategy into how you construct your deck as the game goes on that's very exciting uh, as i said at the outset of this particular piece the uh, wave one shipping which was ascension 10th edition 10th anniversary edition uh, a few other bits and pieces that's all gone out which is fantastic and now we're just waiting for the final mini sculpts uh, to be approved and manufactured and at this stage they're hoping with all <laughs> everything going to plan that they'll be shipping in September, which means we should have it before Christmas well and truly. Uh, so hopefully uh, we can get that out and show you a bit more about what Ascension Tactics is all about. It would be a great one to get around the table and again, have a great table presence with those mini sculpts as well. And it'd be really good to see those characters on those cards we know and love come to life and pop off the, the table. It's gonna be amazing. Ascension Tactics hopefully in September, fingers crossed. Okay, the second game I'm going to talk about that has an R in the title or starting off with the title is a game that I'm really excited about and it's a very simple 1v1 card battling game called Radlands. Now this one at this stage had uh, a few issues at the outset uh, due to um, uh, complaints of uh, plagiarising the name, uh, copyright infringement which turned out to be a non-event. Uh, and also a few other things as well, but Radlands moves along at a steady pace. All of their production elements have been taken care of and they are in mass production stage as we speak. So I'm hoping that, that it will be here before Christmas. We ended up backing at the, um, not the, the base game, the next tier up so we get the playmats as well. Uh, there's something about having a playmat on the table where you can keep all your cards in the right spots, so to speak, just adds that much more table presence. And when I play a game, I want to be invested. I want to basically not just have a deck of cards at the table. If I wanted a deck of cards, I'd go play, I don't know, Uno or something. But having a card game that has a bit more of a uh, depth and strategy to it and a bit more presence with the playmats and also the little water uh, tokens they've got for the game too, it's going to be an absolute classic. And I'm really looking forward to getting this one to the table. Uh, I'm going to have to teach Charlotte how to play it to make sure that I have someone to play against. Uh, and I know there's a couple other folks out there in the YouTube lands that have got copies on their way as well. So who knows, maybe there'll be an Insta duel or an Insta live or a YouTube live duel down the track. Who knows, it's all very exciting stuff. But that's Redlands, looking forward to getting that one to the table when it arrives. And last but not least for projects that we've already backed back then, we are talking about another game starts with R. We're talking about Reload from Colossal. Now this one is 
effectively imagine a PUBG game but on a board game you have to parachute into the island you run around collecting goodies and wasting your opponents in any spectacular fashion when you do uh, waste somebody you cause them to reload you get a reload marker and at the end of the game whoever completes their fame track the furthest will win uh, the game and, and win the adoration of all the fans who are watching the battles unfold um, reload at this stage has been uh, not so much in development as such, it's been more so they've been developing the stretch goals and the add-on packs with all the extra minis and things as well, because there's a lot that's going into this game. Uh, different map tiles, new map upgrades, lots of stretch goals that are going into the actual core box, which is fantastic. And I think you can also get into, uh, obviously I said the, the extra mini boxes and extra characters, different, res uh, different um, versions of the characters, so they've got slightly tweaked statistics and abilities. Uh, reload at this stage is still on target. There hasn't been any massive delays that have been announced for that one at this stage. Um, so hopefully at this stage it will still hit that shores at uh, early 2022, which is very exciting. Uh, reload by Colossal Games looks like it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, having watched a couple of playthroughs, I'm itching to get my hands on it, build up my own hex tile map and go to town and smash some people around the board. Um, I don't know, something about having a big Battle Royale game in about the space of 40 minutes, it appeals to me. It's a good way to sort of um, get a couple of rematches in as well, should things not go my way. Uh, that is Reload by Colossal, and that uh, brings us to the end of all the projects we backed back then. It's now time to move on to what we're discussing and backing right now. Okay, so we talked about it in our last update in June, but now the time has come. It is finally here. We're going to start off with another deck builder because that's what I'm all about. Epic Spell Wars of the Battle Wizards, Annihilageddon 2, Extreme Nacho Legends. Yes, that is its official title. Uh, is currently on Kickstarter at the moment in the dying days of the campaign. So if you haven't already got on board and you don't know what I'm talking about, please jump on board, search Kickstarter for Epic Spell Wars, and you will find a plethora of stuff. Fair warning, it is not for the faint of heart, and it is very much a cheeky, lewd, crude, rude, and very much not PG-13 <laughs> rated game. Uh, lots of... Um, parental advisors and things required. If you've watched our unboxing for Annihilageddon, the first game, the original deck builder, you will know a little bit about what to expect. Um, Annihilageddon 2 Extreme Nacho Legends takes what Annihilageddon and Epic Spell Wars had done before it and just ramps that up all the way up to 11 and then some uh, right off the Richter scale. The updates we've been getting for this one since the campaign started are all been uh, have all been done by hand, almost like a comic book style, uh, in the uh, same sort of style and art of the game. There is a plethora of guest artists who have come on board. They've designed cards uh, purely because they were asked to. Um, they've designed cards that have been representative of the wizards and other particular artworks from the original standalone games and the original set of games, Epic Spell Wars games. And the add-on content for this game, there are nacho chips, as in actual proper, proper Dorito nacho chips that you can use to power up abilities. You can upgrade those into proper 3D plastic printed translucent neon crazy epic um, nachos. There's even a cloth chip bag for you to dip your chips into and keep them safe, uh, which is just ridiculous and totally unnecessary. But I love it! The Gangbangers add-on as well looks really fantastic where you can bring in gangs to fight on your behalf as you play through to try and win the Annihilated Trophy. Um, it's literally zany crazy fun. It uses the same Cerebus engine from uh, DC Deck Building Game, the cleverly titled DC Deck Building Game. But I think there's something about the art on the cards, the fact that you can be bumped off and then come back in fighting on your next turn without any major penalty uh, is just, you'll be out for blood, you'll be out for revenge, and that's what I love about this game. You can literally be down and out for one whole game, getting absolutely thumped, but the next game come back swinging uh, and just uh, take the fight to your opponents for that sweet, sweet, juicy revenge, and I love it. I love it, it's fantastic. Uh, Epic Spell Wars Annihilageddon 2 Extreme Nacho Legends is still currently on Kickstarter, so if you haven't got or secured your copy or backed it, jump on board, it's gonna be a hell of a time. Okay, dialing back a little bit, we're going to go into something that takes uh, a lot more uh, street smarts, I guess. We're talking about a series of games now that is um, 
very much an escape room in a box. We're talking about Escape from the Asylum, which is a series of escape room games uh, a la the Cosmos um, Games Escape or Exit series, where you literally have components that are destroyable. The good thing about this particular uh, style of game is I think that the components are not destroyable and it is replayable a la uh, Scooby-Doo Escape the Haunted Mansion. Um, Escape from the Asylum has a real eerie, eerie feel to it, which I really love. And I think it's going to be something that is going to be quite challenging. Again, it's one of those games where you can only really play once or twice. There are some components that change depending on how you play the game. So playthroughs might be a little bit different on your second and third playthrough. I think there's an element of replayability should you play it with a different group rather than with the same group. I think once one group has played it through though, you won't want to play it through again with the same people, similar to some of the Unlock games that are out there. But um, the components, quality, the fact that you get so much information inside the box as well, or so much content I should say inside the box, um, and there's an expansion to actually expand the base game, I think that's what's going to keep people coming back to it a little bit longer and increase its longevity. Uh, I do feel this is going to have a little bit of resale value as well. Once it's played out, you will be able to find it in marketplaces and things around the world at a cheaper price. Um, so if you were to invest or are to invest in this one, you will find resale value down the track, which is very good as well. Um, I, I think there's something about escape room games. Sometimes they're done really, really badly. Um, so I think this one here with the eerie feel and theme uh, speaks quite well to a lot of gamers as well, uh, similar to Skeptics, which we spoke about last month. Um, the Escape uh, from the Asylum appeals to me in, in terms of the themes that I like to play uh, and the replayability factor as well is, is a bit of a draw card as well. So let's Escape from the Asylum. Check it out. It's definitely worth a look. Okay, and now we're going to do something a little bit different. I know, I know we're meant to be talking about board games. I am still talking about a board game, but I'm going to talk about a digital adaptation. I am talking about Hero Realms, the digital application. Now, this is a digital adaptation of Hero Realms by White Wizard or Wise Wizard Games, as they're now affectionately known. And it is a game that is a beautiful replica of the Star Realms slash Hero Realms deck building engine. Now, this uh, app also has the competitive mode, I think, built in too. As well. so, sorry, the cooperative mode as well as the competitive mode. It looks fantastic. And if you get on board the Kickstarter, you will get upgraded accounts, legendary status, all that sort of stuff that you can then jump right in and start to build out your decks. Um, the Kickstarter allows you access to the beta build of the game. So you will get to play test it before it all um, goes live, which I believe won't happen until March of 2022. So you'll get that full sort of eight months prior access before everything happens, which is awesome. Really, really love that. Um, if you haven't played Hero Realms, what are you doing? Stop watching now, go play. No, no, I'm kidding. Actually, stay, watch this, then go play Hero Realms. It's really, really fun. Um, four factions that you can use to do some epic combos where you're doing, you know, 15, 16, 30 points of damage in a turn and really bring the hurt, which is fantastic. And the solo and cooperative campaign modes for the uh, Ruin of Thandar and Lost Village, really worth a look as well. They are quite the challenge. Uh, and I really, I, I love that about this game. It's fantastic. Um, the digital version is only running for about eight days on Kickstarter. So I believe there's only about four days left. Uh, that's at the time of this recording. So hopefully it'll still be live. Hopefully I'll get this up before the end of the week. Um, but Hero Realms Digital, definitely worth a look. It's going to rival Star Realms, uh, the application that's on Steam and iOS. Um, looking forward to getting my hands on that immediately after the campaign ends. Check it out, Hero Realms Digital. All right, moving back now to the board game side of things with a game that I just happened to come across by pure happenstance in my searches through Kickstarter, a game called Soul Raiders. Now, this is a game that has been designed by Splendor aficionado Mark Andre, and it's a, how do I describe it, an epic co-op adventure with pure immersive storytelling style gameplay. Now, a game of this is meant to last between two to four hours, depending on one, how many players, and obviously how far you want to take the storytelling element. What I love about this game is that it's designed around three unique locations or worlds, and each world has its own ecosystem of beasties, monsters, and people to interact with. So you can pick and choose how your story unfolds. Um, the AI of this one, this is a, sort of an adventure. I don't want to say dungeon crawler because the different scenarios and themes and areas are obviously quite different to that. 
but the AI for this one, based on some really simplified rules, will react accordingly based on the actions of the players. And I think the ingenious, beautiful part about this is that every time as you play through a scenario or play through a game, the game is going to react accordingly and basically learn from your actions through the simple AI rules. So. You might start off um, trying to build up your resources and basically farm for experience to level up characters and learn new abilities. But then you'll find that the game will respond accordingly and, and all of a sudden bring out nastier, tougher uh, and, and you know more plentiful uh, characters or, or enemies to, for you, to thwart your, your plans. Um, imagine it's sort of a fast-paced action-adventure Diablo-esque style game where it's basically one versus the many, whether it's one to four of you versus hundreds of thousands of, of minions and things as well. Uh, there are you know, going to be locations or, or aspects of the game where you'll be facing down hordes of enemies at any one time and have to think really quickly and plan your moves accordingly, not just amongst yourself but amongst the rest of the people in your party to take down those hordes of enemies. And that co-op... Um, almost hopelessness is going to be something that's going to make this game quite unique and also quite a challenge for when you overcome those challenges uh, it's going to be stories you're going to be you know, talking about with your friends uh, when you're you know having downtime and a beer after after the onslaught um, there is something like 800 different cards and location cards and things in this game it is huge absolutely huge uh, Soul Raiders is something that is looking like it's going to be absolutely epic, and I mean epic in the most grand scale I can think of. My concern is that with the 800 cards and everything else, there's going to be a lot of sorting and things. My also concern is that as you're sorting through things for the first time, you might end up spoiling stuff down the track if you haven't played it for the first time. And I think this is a game that's going to be built heavily on revealing the next card or, or seeing what else there is to do, uh, similar to, you know, a campaign of Arkham, Arkham Horror LCG. You don't want to know necessarily what's coming next until you have to pull that card. And I, my concern is that there's so much components you could potentially, you know, spoil a little bit of a surprise for yourself. Having said that, there's that much components, that many cards, that if you happen to see something, chances are by the time it actually gets to the point to reveal that card, you would have forgotten that it's in there anyway. So it does have that walk working for it as well. Uh, Soul Raiders at this stage is, I don't know, 500% funded. <laughs> so there's a lot of people on board. Definitely worth a look. Check it out. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. And lastly, for the projects that we're backing now, this is one that I happened across after watching a preview video from one of my other favorite uh, content creators. And it speaks to me because it was a game that I would be able to involve my family or my brothers in. Um, I have a lot of respect for my siblings and obviously my dad as well. Uh, it's nice to get the boys together on occasion. It does not ha happen as often as I would like. And I figured this was a game that would help us uh, come together at the table and really, really, um, I don't know, give us something to, to discuss when we're not necessarily at the table playing games as well. Uh, my brothers and I are aficionados of uh, all things uh, spirit-based in terms of drinking and things like that. We don't go out and write ourselves off by all means, but we do enjoy the finer things in life. So, of course, I am talking about Distilled. Now, this is a worker placement slash engine building game where you work as someone who has inherited a distillery and you're working to develop and sell the most amazing spirits you can create and therefore become the most wealthiest and win the title of Master, Dist uh, Master Distiller. It speaks to me because I've got a history of working in hospitality and therefore understand a little bit about the process about which spirits are... Um, the most sought after and also what I enjoy in terms of smoky flavours in my 18 year old or, or 21 year old aged um, peat flavoured scotches. Laphroaig is one of my favourites. I love it. It's amazing. So to be able to play a board game with my brothers who also have the same sort of aficionados or same, have the same sort of um, understanding of, of the distilling process and what they like and don't like and be a bit more of a connoisseur, sitting around the table talking about what we're creating and, and drinking <laughs> as well while we while we play. Uh, the game does come with a set of coasters, by the way, which was a nice touch. Uh, Distilled, it just, it speaks to me on such a personal level to be able to have something that I can play to connect with my family. Um, not just because of the sheer class and the connoisseurism of, of, of 
uh, developing those spirits, whether it's whiskey, vodka, or whatever the case may be, but you can play cards to develop your own and create your own flavors, including the four blank cards they've just announced they're gonna be including as well. So you can develop your entire own spirits from scratch with chocolate notes or whatever the case may be. Choose your poison. Um, Distilled is absolutely smashing goals on Kickstarter. Uh, they are they have just unlocked a first player metal um, medal for the uh, for a token for the first player, and on the reverse, it's got master distiller on it for the person who is who achieves victory. Uh, the mini campaign, mini expansion, is included in the. Um, all in pledge as well. Uh, the coasters that I mentioned as well, they've really, I think a lot of people appreciate a good drop and I think this is why this game has done so well. Uh, it's been developed in multiple languages now as well, which is fantastic. And if they can get to a certain point, they'll be able to bring it to uh, German markets uh, and either Euro markets as well, which is absolutely fantastic. If you haven't checked out Distilled, they are still running live on Kickstarter as we speak at the time of this recording. Uh, it's definitely worth a look purely for the worker placement engine building mechanic alone. Uh, being able to sell off your goods at a higher price to turn a profit, uh, <laughs> it's going to be something worth checking out. I know that I'm going to enjoy the hospitality element, sitting back with a nice um, glass of something on the, on the coasters as well as we play. Uh, it's going to be a really good time. And who knows, down the track when it arrives, I can get all the boys around and we'll be able to give you a playthrough as well. Who knows? Uh, but look, if you've got a favourite spirit, by all means pop it in the comments below. Um, but yeah, Distilled it looks like it's going to be an absolute classic, absolute favourite. And that should be out, I think it's going to be March or April 2022, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but yeah, at this stage, hopefully the market's eased by then and they'll be able to ship on schedule. Uh, distilled, check it out, definitely worth a look. And that brings us to all the things we're backing now. And uh, obviously now the only place uh, to go from here is beyond. So we're gonna have a look now at some of the projects that are coming up in the not too distant future. And now we come to all things beyond the games that are about to launch on Kickstarter that we have an interest in. Now there are a few here, uh, not just on Kickstarter, I should say on GameFound as well. Uh, a few here that we have backed previously or, or games created by these uh, folk uh, and there's some on the way which is very exciting um, the first one i want to talk about is a game called get to the checkpoint get to the checkpoint not get to the chopper get to the checkpoint now this is a game by uh, sam milham great games uh, lost in valhalla jurassica all those folks and silverwood grove which is just due to arrive in the not too distant future very excited for that one get to the chopper oh, okay sorry <laughs> Get to the Checkpoint, I'm going to be doing that now, you better watch me. Get to the Checkpoint is an 80s action adventure inspired game where you literally need to take your troop uh, of heroes and try and get them to survive an onslaught of craziness. And I do mean craziness because there's zombies, there's fish people, there's all sorts of manner of crazy things. It's a dice rolling combat game, which means I will probably lose. Uh, but I think at the same time, it's a different feel from the Lost in Jurassic, Lost in Straya, uh, and even Silverwood Grove, which is more of a worker placement style game. So I think uh, resource management as well. Get to the checkpoint for me is a little more of a tongue-in-cheek version of game in the style of um, a Hostage Negotiator, for example. So while I, I don't know, I, I think there's not a bit of there's not a lot of hand management uh, as as with, is the case with Hostage Negotiator, but I think the dice rolling component and the push your luck component of this game uh, is going to keep you coming back for more. Just one more roll, just one more roll, a la Zombie uh, Dice, for example, which is just one of those fantastic games or Greed for that matter. Get to the checkpoint. Looks like it's going to have the same comic booky, crazy cartoon art that we know and love uh, from Great Games. Uh, is the gameplay going to live up to the hype? I don't know. We'll see what happens when the Kickstarter launches later this month. Um, I think the Kickstarter is slated to launch for July 30. So yeah, by all means, check it out when they launch. Uh, you can obviously subscribe to the page pre-launch to be notified as soon as it goes live. Uh, I dare say with the success of their other campaigns, it is going to go off like a frog in a sock and be backed very, very quickly. Let's get to the checkpoint by Great Games and we'll move on to our next one. Okay, so moving away from the fast paced action style games, deck builders in general that I know and love that really speak to me, 
to find a game that I totally didn't expect to discover on my searches through Kickstarter. And it's a game that speaks to the other aspect of my life. So obviously I'm a massive board game aficionado, but in my other life that some of you may or may not be aware, I'm a photographer, an event photographer, a wedding photographer uh, as such. So to find a game that speaks to me working behind the camera um, is very, very exciting, but it's not what you're thinking. This isn't an event management, event wedding style game that's got nothing to do with it. This is a game that puts you behind the camera uh, in a very unique and wonderful location. And I am talking about Wild Serengeti. Now, in this game, you take on the role of a documentary producer and you are trying to photograph and, and, and record animals in the wild uh, to create the most inspiring documentary you possibly can. Now the project hasn't launched on Kickstarter, but from what I know of this game, the components are just incredible. They're mind blowing. They're beautiful, uh, handcrafted or laser cut, whichever way you think about it. Uh, they're meeples in the style of the uh, animals you'll come across in an African savannah. So uh, <laughs> there's even, I think, a, a Zazu-esque style um, bird, uh, and then there's, you know, lions, and obviously zebras and everything else as well. Uh, there is a 3D board a la Everdell, which, uh, I don't know, just about moving characters and moving animals into different locations to create the best tableau. It just looks fantastic, and it's, I think, going to be an element of a worker placement and action point system, um, but at the same time, Wild Serengeti is going to have something that I really, really, really look for in a board game, and that's table presence. Setting up that uh, tableau, that scenery, and then moving the pieces around to create those look. Uh, but it's going to be a joy to photograph for purely for for content purposes for YouTube and other and other facets as well. The components of this game already look amazing. The gameplay looks like it's going to be reasonably simple to understand, and it's going to be a game like uh, Splendor, where you sit there and you actually can work out a system of how to get the best out of your turn, uh, and there's, which, which means there's going to be very little downtime. Uh, Wild Serengeti looks absolutely fantastic. The components look amazing. It's definitely worth something checking out when it launches. Uh, I think August 18th is when it, when it launches, so the August 18th here in Australia is going to be actually in the early hours of, um, or sorry, the late hours of August 17 because of the time difference. Definitely worth a look. It's going to be fantastic. A wild Serengeti. Check it out. And lastly, for our Beyond section for July 2021, coming soon to Kickstarter, and I think it's going to be in August. I think. I'm not entirely sure. We are talking about a game called Mythwind. Now, Mythwind is something very, very different altogether again. Now, this is a game that is part RPG, part asymmetrical gameplay, part... Um, I, I can't even think of how to describe it. It's sort of like a game where you're building a village. So you're a pioneer, uh, frontiersman, constructing a village from scratch uh, a la Charterstone. However, this is a game that has a fantasy element as well. So you go out into the Valley of Mythwind and you're trying to create this village the beauty of this is you can choose your play style from a host of different mechanics. So if you like action point system games where you get four actions like Pandemic and you can do whatever you want with those action points on a turn, you can play that way. If you would prefer worker placement, you want to move your piece there and collect the resources from that particular place, you can play that way. Or if you're like me and you love a good deck builder, you can play that way as well. The asymmetricality of being able to incorporate all those mechanics and play styles in the one game that you can choose to play whichever way you like, that boggles my mind because if I'm playing a deck building game and you're playing the same game but you're doing worker placement, I, I still don't understand the mechanics of that. That, that. that intrigues the hell out of me how they've made, made that work. Um, the fact that it is built as a one to two player game as well is fantastic too. It keeps it nice and simple and it's a game you can campaign with a partner for as long as you like. Another beautiful thing about this game that I've discovered is that you can set it up in literally about five minutes, which is brilliant. Quick setup time is always fantastic. But for me, when, I'm, when I start a game, I want to finish. And if I get interrupted, I get really, really cranky because I just want to finish the campaign, finish the scenario, finish the session to its inevitable conclusion. Mythwind is a game where if something happens and you need to get interrupted or the phone rings, you can literally stop playing 
right there and just pick up where you left off. You can literally pack up where you are, the game remembers your progress and things happen in real time. So you might come back to the table and turn a card that says, if an hour and a half has passed since you last played, this has happened. If two days have passed, this has happened. So things occur in real time in the game. The pure mechanics of how I understand how that works and how much content there is for this game, I'm so intrigued by how this is going to go and, and what the campaign is going to bring to light in terms of stretch goals and add-ons and things as well. The designers of the game obviously spent a lot of time developing the different mechanics and how they're going to interact. Playing the game, building the village, fast setup time, uh, a cooperative style gameplay but also a solo element as well means that the replayability could be interesting. I think as well, based on the other mechanics that we've discussed so far, if you're playing it solo, it would be very easy for someone just to drop in and join your playthrough. Does the game ever end? I don't know. I don't know as much about it as I probably should, but I tell you what, when it launches on Kickstarter, I will be there because this intrigues the absolute hell out of me. Uh, Mythwind is uh, open world in every sense of the word, and I think that's going to be really intriguing as well. Um, the artwork looks fantastic uh, on the game. The artwork and the quality of, of the components so far from what I've seen uh, look really, really interesting. And the more I learn about Mythwing, the more I want to know. Uh, and that, I think, builds itself to something that's definitely worth uh, having a look at when the time comes. Mythwind, I believe, is going to kick start at end of August, early September this year. I highly suggest you have a look at it in the meantime. Um, Mythwind is going to be something very, very unique, along with, you know, uh, Serengeti, as we've just mentioned earlier. Um, I, I think, yeah, I don't know, it's, it's a great time for board games. There's a lot of crazy new content and new, new titles coming out, and everyone, designers across the globe, are trying to push that envelope uh, to develop something truly exceptional. Um, but yeah, Mythwind, uh, coming to Kickstarter soon. Check it out, it's going to be amazing. I will see you there. And that is it. For all of the updates for July 2021, what gems have I missed? Is there a game that you've come across that you think is better than the ones I've listed here? By all means, pop it in the comments below, or you can always hit us up privately at orders at hbgaming.com.au. As always, thank you to our Patreon subscribers. You have been an, an, an immense support for us here at HP Gaming. If you want to join the HP Gaming Gamer Army, and get some amazing rewards and other bits and pieces. Of course, early access to all that content and videos. You can hit us up at patreon.com forward slash hpgamingau. Uh, and of course, if you want to get your game on and you are within Australia or New Zealand now as well, uh, you can hit us up at hpgaming.com.au and get your game on. Until then, folks, there is plenty more gaming to be done, plenty more coming to the channel, so stay tuned. By all means, Click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you back at the table for more gaming action very, very soon. Until then, though, it is bye for now.